Good morning, everybody. Very warm welcome to our morning service of Holy Communion. As usual, you will need the communion booklets and the hymn books and the hymn numbers uh, up on the walls. And this morning, not only do we have the organ played by Bal, but we've also got a choir. We're going to recite a bit of his bread, and we're going to do the psalm responses in the communion. I think it's two years since we did that. I'm sure you have a problem. And some responses in the community. So. Thank you. So, if you'd like to take your service booklets, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Our first hymn is number 77 Breathe on me, friend of God. 77. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, 
Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit, reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. We stand to sing the Gloria. Whatever the man called each living creature that was its name. 
like stomach to blossom. Here are the gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the one day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. And they put up. And while they were sailing, he fell asleep. Again, swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging winds. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed, and said to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obeyed. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth, the thoughts of all our hearts, be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Like the death. I hope none of you have too much disruption from storm units. Electricity off for a bit, perhaps greenhouse panes blown out. I've got someone's in my drive if anyone's missing one. But we've seen and uh, we've heard the news and seen pictures of how it's affected other people in other parts of the country much worse. The storm has caused major disruption and reminds us of how little we can do against the force of the wind. So we can imagine ourselves into the stilling of the storm story, especially having seen the height and the force of the waves on TV and news pictures. And we can see why it made a big impact on Jesus' disciples. This story is recounted in three of the Gospels, and St Mark fills us in on the details. Disciples of Jesus were already on the lake, and the storm began to blow up while Jesus was asleep in the stern of the boat. The disciples couldn't understand this. They were in the midst of a growing danger, and Jesus was sleeping. So they were concerned and upset, not only because of the danger they were in, but because it seemed Jesus hadn't even noticed. I wonder, do we ever feel like that? Here we are in trouble and God doesn't seem to care. There's no answer to our prayers. He seems indifferent. Nothing seems to happen when we go to him troubled and distraught. We cry out and there's no answer. Well, that was how his disciples felt. And they weren't panicking for no reason. Several of them were fishermen, and they knew that they, they knew they gathered it very well, and they knew that the storm was dangerous and that they could be drowned. Well, contrary to what they thought, Jesus wasn't asleep because of the care. He was exhausted, but he was also asleep because he wasn't afraid. Faith and fear are mutually exclusive. And so the disciples shake Jesus away and yell at him that they're about to drown. And Jesus doesn't immediately answer them. First of all, he deals with the storm. He woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was a calm. <clears throat> Now, the miracle doesn't lie in the stilling of the storm, because nature would do that eventually, but in the suddenness with which it happened. All of a sudden, the wind, which had been roaring and beating about their ears, stopped, and there was absolute stillness. And the waves, which had been dashing over the side, spilling the boat, threatening them, mounting up higher on every side, 
or someone they stilled, as though a giant hand had pressed them down, and there was a great calm. All the way across the lake to the other side, into the mountains to the east, the whole lake suddenly spilled. And they realised that this was indeed a supernatural stilling of the storm. And in the silence, Jesus asked the disciples, where is your faith? Isn't that a bit of a strange question to ask men who were in danger of losing their lives? Just a moment earlier, they were tossing about in a boat which was filling rapidly with water in the midst of a raging storm with no hope of help. Why should they be afraid? And yet Jesus asked them, why are you afraid? Where is your faith? And that's why we become afraid, because we lose faith. Faith is always the answer to our fears, regardless of what they are. So Jesus puts his finger right on it when he asks them, where is your faith? Jesus' friends had forgotten all the things he said to them in the Sermon on the Mount about the extent that God's care for them. You remember? You're much more valuable than flowers and birds. God cares for them. Will he not much more care for you, O you of little faith? Here he was in the boat with them, so his fate would be their fate, and yet they've forgotten all this. And it's easy for us to forget too. We know what it's like to be buffeted. We know what it's like to feel we have no control over the circumstances of our lives. And this is where our trust in Jesus really matters. We always want him to do something to make things easier. But he just wants us to trust him. Jesus' presence with the disciples was all they needed to survive. Sometimes we think there will be smooth sailing with Jesus. We think that with Jesus in the boat, there will be no storm, no waves, no fear. But an easy life isn't what Jesus promises. If we're Christ's disciples, it should be enough to be with Jesus, whether life seas are running smoothly or not. If people promise that Christianity will be a life of continual success and growth, they're misleading us, and expecting that leads only to frustration and despair. It's enough that Christ goes with us on our journey. We're mistaken if we judge his care for us, or if we judge the state of our discipleship by the roughness of the seas over which we sail. There are, of course, instances like this one in Galilee where Jesus does stand up and still the storm. They're not the times when our faith is particularly strong, but they are the times when God in his love and his care for us, decides that we need him to step in. And then we should be amazed at his power over all of creation and humanity and say, like the disciples, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. But if we believe that he's Lord and controller of the universe, we should be content to have him with us knowing that we're safe with him, no matter what happens. When things get tough, I find it helpful to remind myself of a version of the words in the hymn, Be Still My Soul, which we'll sing later, but it's a different version. So the words I like are, Be still, my soul. The winds and waves still know his voice who brought them when he walked the road. Amen. We're going to stand to declare our faith in this God, page four in your service. Yes. 
speedily in one God, the Father, the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of the Lord, the light of the Lord, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified out of the Virgin Spirit. He suffered death and was made. On the third day he rose again, and called us to the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and to seek that right hand to follow. You will come again with the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, in the seat of the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped in the Lord of night, who has spoken to the prophets. One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel on Thursday to the The intercession responses found on page five of my service in case. Creator God, who has provided us with this amazing and wonderful world over which you have divine control. Creator God, who has shown us that you are at the centre of our lives, at the heart of all creation, the one who holds it all and brings us life and peace. We thank you, whatever we are going through, whatever our fears, you will never leave us. You will be there for us always as our creator and father, as our saviour and friend. With this knowledge in our minds and hearts, we humbly bring before you our prayers for the world and all Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Creator God, in the turbulence of the time in which we find ourselves and the uncertainty about what the future will hold, we look to you for a wise presence. Teach us to trust you in whatever situation we find ourselves, not just when our boat is sinking, but in all times and our lives where you make a real difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear Creator God, we pray for the Christian Church in all its wonderful diversity, bringing the elements of different cultures into worship and service. We pray that it may be a beacon of hope with actual good, transforming fear into faith. And giving all who seek you the courage to follow in the way of your kingdom. In our own churches, we pray for our bishop Stephen and Colin, and for his power and hope. As we all prepare for the period of Lent, help each one of us to reflect on our own faith and to know that in these testing times, if we put our trust in you, you will be there for each of us. We pray for every member of our church community and ask that you bless us all during this coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world, our common home. We pray that through your grace we may hear its cry of damage and be moved to protect it for future generations to enjoy. We ask that you open our eyes to recognise the all creation and help us to do what we can to explore and care for the wonderful gift you have given us. At the start of their trade 
We pray the word of people who are already facing droughts, floods, and storms in lives and livelihoods. And ask that you may grant them strength and hope for the future as they work to adapt to the changing climate. Creator God, give to all leaders and judgments wisdom to make just decisions which respect the earth and all that lives in it, providing justice for those who are the poorest and most vulnerable. We do not have the power to still storms and earthquakes in the natural world, in political life, or in our own minds. But we pray that you give each of us faith to know that you meet us in all these moments, suffering with us and with the chaos and doubt, showing us a relationship that is endlessly creative, endlessly loving, endlessly abundant. Lord, in your mercy, we are yeah. Created God, we pray for our communities of Adam and Milton. We ask that through your grace we may be good neighbors to each other and to the whole of creation, restoring and caring for all that God has made. We thank you for those agencies and their volunteers who respond to the cry of the vulnerable and those who live on the margins of our society and our wide world, trying to make their lives less difficult. Creator God, you love all that you have made and all that has evolved. Open the eyes of us, your people, that your compassion might be reflected in our care for one another and our care of your world, our home. Lord, in your mercy, we are our prayer. Creator God, we pray for all those people who feel defenseless, their lives slip from their control. For those weak in body, mind, and spirit, for those destitute, neglected, or abused. We pray for those who feel powerless, storms of life threatening to engulf them, for everyone to whom their own problems seem insurmountable, for those who have been bereaved, for those submerged in fear and despair. Help them to feel your protection and love. In our own church community, we pray for Anne Goldby, John Cordenley, and Julian Goodpark, and for the family of Glenn Davison, who are bereaved at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, forgive us for failing to understand and accept the great demands placed upon us by your love. We promise to be courageous but find ourselves afraid. We promise to trust, but find ourselves afraid. We promise to have faith, find ourselves doubting. We ask that as we face the current uncertainties of this world, you will help us to seek your abiding presence, your protection and your love, and to find ways to show that love to others. Merciful Father, would you please stand for the peace? Jesus says to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled or afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's turn to each other and So we're going to sing number 61, Still My Song.
spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Sit for the prayer. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be thanks. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, saints and angels, praising you and singing.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table as a sort of Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Gracious <coughs> Lord. So to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore follow him and do us. Let us pray. God, our Creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise, and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our last hymn is number 288, I cannot tell. <laughs>
thank you, Liz. Thank you for taking us over. So thank you to Val uh, and the choir for the wonderful music. Um, there is, of course, a new newsletter, two sides of useful things to know. Uh, I'm not going to go through it all, but I just wanted to highlight two things on the newsletter and, and one that isn't. Um, I don't think it's on the newsletter, but there will be a Thanksgiving service for the life of Clem Davison at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 9th of March, and everybody is welcome to that. On the notice sheet, um, there is uh, an Ash Wednesday community service on Wednesday the 2nd of March here at 7 p.m. And uh, just one thing to highlight that's also on there is the uh, lens entries. There is a sign up sheet, I think, somewhere. There's a sign up sheet. If I wish to sign up from anywhere else. Anything else that's not on the sheet or anybody wants to turn? which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.